At 9.28 a.m. on February 15, 2017, the ISRO's Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle 37 launched 104 satellites in one go from Sriharikota. The payload had two satellites from India, one each from Kazakhstan, Israel, the Netherlands, Switzerland and the UAE, along with 96 satellites from the USA. This launch marked the 38th consecutive successful mission of the BSLV. Today, ISRO remains the go-to space agency for several countries to put their satellites in orbit, making India the leader in space market and thereby a formidable space power. This would not have been possible if not for this man, Nambi Narayanan. Behind India's success story lies a dark tale of this rocket scientist who was wronged. Born in Tapil Nadu, Nambi Narayanan completed his graduation in mechanical engineering and joined ISRO in 1966 as a technical assistant. He did his master's in chemical rocket propulsion from Princeton University on a NASA fellowship, making him the first Ivy League scientist from India. He completed the master's program in a record 10 months, something that no other person had done before. Post his completion, he was offered a luxurious job in the US. But Nambi rejected the offer and returned to India with expertise in liquid propulsion at a time when Indian rocketry was still solely dependent on solid propellants. He began working on designing liquid propulsion engines at ISRO under the guidance of Vikram Sarabhai, while another team led by APJ Abdul Kalam was working on mastering the science of building solid propellant motors. Envisioning future civilian space programs, India signed an agreement with Russia for transfer of technology to develop cryogenic fuel-based engines. ISRO chose one of its finest scientists, Nambi Narayanan, to head the indigenous cryogenic program. In 1994, ISRO successfully launched the PSLV in its second attempt, which had the Vikas engines developed by Nambi Narayanan. But just days after the launch, Nambi was incarcerated, tortured and rewarded with the tag of a traitor. Nambi had become a collateral damage in the political feud between two factions of the Congress in Kerala. At that time, one faction of the Kerala Congress led by A.K. Antony and Omen Chandi were looking to embarrass the other faction led by then Kerala Chief Minister Karunakaran. They got an opportunity when one Maldivian woman named Mariam Rashida was arrested on the charges of overstaying her visa. However, Mariam Rashida was reportedly arrested on false espionage charges after she had rejected the police inspector's offer to indulge in sexual activities. But Rashida's arrest and the arrest of another Maldivian woman named Fauzia Hassan provided the much-needed fodder for A.K. Antony and Omen Chandi to target Chief Minister Karunakaran. The police had found the phone number of D. Shashikumaran, Nambi's colleague at ISRO in Rashida's diary. Rashida had Shashikumaran's number as his wife was a doctor and had gone to see her. However, the politically charged Kerala police implicated Shashikumaran, K. Chandrasekharan and Nambi Narayanan, accusing them of being honey-trapped by Maldivian women and leaking confidential flight test information to Pakistan. In order to strengthen the claims, R.B. Srikumar, an officer close to Congress ecosystem, was posted as the deputy director of the Intelligence Bureau. Nambi Narayanan was charged with the Official Secrets Act and was alleged to be a member of a spy ring. Under IB custody, Nambi Narayanan was forced to confess to the crime. When he refused, Nambi was subjected to horrendous mental and physical torture by the then Kerala Police and Intelligence Bureau officers. He was handcuffed, beaten and tortured for hours until he collapsed and was taken to the hospital. Following this, the case was transferred to the CBI, which after 18 months of investigation, submitted a closure report in 1996 stating that the espionage case was fabricated. Nambi eventually got bail after 50 days of being under custody. The Supreme Court in 1996 had upheld the findings of the CBI and had asked the Kerala government to pay rupees 1 lakh in compensation to Narayanan and others. And Nambi Narayanan spent the rest of his career doing a desk job at ISRO's Bengaluru facility. But the case did not end there. The then CPIM government led by E.K. Nayanar tried to reopen the case for political reasons to show the previous government in a bad light. 
the government ordered more investigations but was struck down by the Supreme Court in May 1998. In September 1999, the National Human Rights Commission passed strictures against the government of Kerala for having damaged Narayana's distinguished career in space research along with the physical and mental torture to which he and his family were subjected. The Supreme Court in 2018 ruled that Narayanan was not guilty of any of the espionage charges as accused by the Kerala police and the bench said the case was unnecessary and that he was implicated. It also appointed a three-member panel headed by a former Supreme Court judge DK Jain to probe the arrest and torture of former space scientist in the ISRO spy scandal that turned out to be fake. On 14 April 2021, the Supreme Court of India ordered a CBI probe into the involvement of police officers in the conspiracy after the DK Jain committee report pointed out to a conspiracy. Deposing before the CBI in August 2021, Nambi Narayanan told the investigating officers about his encounter with Shri Kumar where the latter had threatened him for not obliging to appoint his relative for a post at Tumba. You will regret this in the future, Shri Kumar had reportedly told Nambi. Interestingly, former Kerala DGP Shibi Matthews, who was instrumental in framing Nambi, had accused Shri Kumar of forcing him to arrest Nambi Narayanan. Today, RB Shri Kumar, who is currently a leader of the Aam Aadmi Party, Shibi Matthews and 16 others have been named accused in the FIR registered by the CBI. After a long arduous legal battle, the Supreme Court awarded Nambi Narayanan a compensation of rupees 50 lakhs for the wrongful arrest and harassment by the Kerala police. In 2019, the Modi government conferred the Padma Bhushan on Nambi Narayanan for his contribution in the field of rocket science. The Nambi Narayanan episode marks the darkest chapter in the history of Indian space sector as it curtailed India's emergence as a space power by at least two decades. The man deserves a lot more adulation as it is Nambi's contribution in the domain of liquid propulsion that has propelled Indian space power to sky heights.